it was a huge challenge um, dealing with the archive on this project because um, our subject, Jimmy Carter, as president, was one of the most documented men in the world during that that time of his presidency. So it was a mountain of footage to go through. A lot of times on documentaries, you have the opposite problem where you're like searching for anything. And this was just like, there was so much that we had to do a lot of sifting and a lot of kind of guesswork in terms of a lot of things from you know, the 1970s and even we started in um, looking for stuff of him when he was governor of Georgia in the 60s and uh, or early 70s, I should say. But um, but a lot of stuff just wasn't accurately um, described in the databases. So we would have to just kind of cross reference things and look for particular dates and cities and we were very lucky sometimes and found some amazing pieces of archive. And then other times it was just, you know, nothing good was on that reel. And that's why it was never described properly. Um, but we wound up with even, you know, once we kind of sifted down into what we were going to actually bring into our edit system, we wound up with thousands of photographs and hundreds of hours of of video footage. It was probably somewhere in the neighborhood of six to 800 hours of footage that we whittled down into a 90 minute film. <laughs> so it was a lot. <laughs> It was interesting because we we didn't really have a, a very set in stone, stone kind of structure because we knew that we didn't want it to be necessarily chronological. Um, and, you know, because I, I just thought that would be more boring to, to kind of do it in a strictly chronological way. And... There, and I knew that there would be sort of uneven gaps in time that we sort of skip ahead sometimes just because of the the nature of the film is that we always wanted to make a music documentary about President Jimmy Carter. And because he's not a musician, it was a strange kind of concept to... to even just to get our heads around what we were what we were doing in the beginning, and um, so we we kind of worked with the archive very. Um, it, 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 a lot of times, the the pieces of archive that we would find that were good would dictate. Okay, now we're going to build a piece around this piece of archive because. Um, you know, if if you have people telling a great story, but you have nothing to illustrate it, then you'd just be looking at, you know, a bunch of old dudes telling stories on camera. And that wasn't the kind of film we wanted to make, you know. So the archive was really crucial in, in building out, you know, and, and in our selection of which stories we decided to to include in the film. And, and there were things that we built out that we had great archive for, but for whatever reason, it just didn't come alive in the same way that, you know, there it there's a funny thing that happens with um, documentaries where always, you know, the great scenes, you build them and they never leave the sequence. And then other things might come away and come back or, or we move them around and try them in different places. And the structure was, was very, very fluid until kind of we got about probably three quarters of the way through the edit that we finally like locked into a structure and, and, you know, built from there. But, um, but yeah, it was a very organic kind of process of, archive pieces would come in, we would build scenes, we would figure out where to place them. We had a you know our big board with the with the index cards on it that we were constantly moving things around and um 
looking at it that way and then we'd try it and um, see what worked, you know? One thing that was actually a revelation was um, when we first started the project and we had this idea of, um, you know, making this, this music film about Jimmy Carter, I wasn't a hundred percent sure that we were going to be able to pull it off, you know, <laughs> like I wasn't sure that we would, we would be able to carry through the entire film with always having some kind of musical touchstone to it and to, to his story. And in particular, I was very worried about how we were going to cover the Iranian hostage crisis and would there be any musical connection to that because I figured there wouldn't be. I assumed there would not be a musical connection to that. And when we did the interview with President Carter and he told us about the fact that during the Iran hostage crisis, which was essentially the most stressful time of his entire life, he, it was the, you know, the biggest challenge he had ever faced. The way that he was able to kind of get through that crisis was that he turned to music and he would listen to Willie Nelson's gospel record in in his office when he was trying to, you know, get away from all the noise and think carefully about how he was going to move forward during this time. And that to me was such a revelation was when when I realized that we were going to be able to pull off this ambitious thing that we had set out to do was was when he told us that story because I was like, okay, this is something that he never told anyone before. Even his aides didn't know this story. It was a special thing that was very distinctive and very, you know, uniquely appropriate for our particular film. Um, and it just, that was to me like, the, the light bulb moment, like, oh my God, it's going to work. 